This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Hyler versus Butler. You two are married? Yes, yes. Your Honor. Been together two... Married two years, together five? Yes. Yes. And you all actually met when you were putting your mother in a nursing home. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. All right. So, why did you bring your husband here today? Because I feel like my husband's side chick instead of... And not his wife. His side chick? Yes, his side chick. How does a wife become a side chick? How does a wife become a side chick? What is he doing to make you feel like a side chick? I can call my husband sometimes. He won't answer my calls. Oh. He'll send me straight to voicemail, depending on who he around. So, automatically, I'm going to feel that type of way. This hurts you deeply. Yes. I'm your wife. This not, I'm not your girlfriend. Do you treat her like a side chick? I treat her... I, tr- I treat her accordingly. So, what does that... Whoa. Okay. <laughs> what so that is there a time... Wait, wait, wait. So, Hold what up. What does that mean? Is there a time when she's a side piece? She acts like a side piece? I don't know a wife that puts you out three times a week. What are you doing? Years. And I don't... Well, like, I don't, you, know I, I don't put him out that. three times a week, but when I do, don't answer or, like, lock the door, it's because he been ignoring me all day long. Whoever you around, I don't care who you around, answer your phone. Anything could be happening. I gotta tell you, we have three kids. <laughs> and... And not answering the phone is not an option. I don't it's care how mad option. we are at each Can't other. Do that. You got to answer your phone because you but, don't know what's going on see, in the it, household. Yeah, y'all cut from a different type of cloth. This is a different type of situation. No, it's not. Damn, so, no, no, married folks, 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 married folks. Marriage is marriage. Yeah, uh, wait, the, wait, 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 wait. Let me ask you this. Did your vows say in sickness and in health? No. You didn't... Oh! Your vows didn't say that? My, oh, my did... vows said treat them like suppose. What? So treat people how they treat you. Better or worse? You didn't have better or worse in your vows? I ain't hear nobody tell me that. Who, who said that? And this was his idea to get married and, and, and this is how I'm getting treated. Even the clerks, when we got married at the courthouse, in my courthouse, they said, maybe you shouldn't marry this man. He's not ready. And they don't even know us. Okay, they said that at the courthouse? When you yes. get married? Yes. Don't All right. marry him because he was cracking jokes and stuff about getting married. He was not taking it seriously. And this well, was his idea. He proposed me. I didn't say let's get married. He did this. Okay. What's on the line today if you find out he's cheating? I'm done. I'm going to file for divorce. I'm just really leave because he... I can't make nobody be with me. Right. I cannot make him love me. I can tell you are absolutely serious about I'm this. I'm tired. Do you understand that she is absolutely serious that if this doesn't... If you are cheating, she is divorcing you? Yes. Are you okay with that? I mean, I don't want to get no divorce, but if that's what, you know, what we got to do, that's what we got to do. Do you love her? Yes. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to stay with her? Uh, No. Ah! Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. I can't, I can't. I got up so, out of my bed and came here, so yeah, I'm gonna do what it takes. So, so are these the kind of jokes you were cracking on your wedding day that put the question in her mind from day one? Hey, wait a minute, those are the jokes he was cracking. He missed the important part. In, in sickness and hell, better or worse, you missed the part they that re- you need that. to hear. They don't have that no more. Yes, they do. <laughs> did you, wait, at the wedding you Show went to, me. did they have that? Yes, they did. They All right, y'all me. were at different weddings then. Uh, Clearly, okay. at some point, you were happy. Yeah. yeah. It's hard for me to see it. You can see I got one eye open on this. Right. Can you take me back to the happy times? Okay. When I first met him, he, uh, I met him at his place of employment. Okay. He was, uh, he a CNA, and my mother had, was getting transferred into his facility. Okay. And, um... Uh, his co-worker called him up. You should come up here. These girls from Chicago, they pretty, you know. What was he like yeah. back then? Um, he was telling me, like, all this good stuff. Like, um... Like what? You beautiful. Because I may want to tell Miss Cutler some of this. So, t- <laughs> what, what good stuff was um, he telling Oh, he was telling me, like, you're a beautiful uh, woman. And, yeah, I like that. You need uh, that. I like the fact, okay, you wear your real hair and stuff like that. <laughs> You know, he just made me, like, feel like... He put my self-esteem, like, over the roof. When he said that at the time, he meant it. He didn't just say that. He couldn't have been just saying that at the time. 
Uh, all right. Do stuff like that. Mr. Right. Butler, is that how scary. you remember it? She cute. She always been pretty to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she ain't that, No disagreement there. Yeah, she a pretty woman. And so how did you treat her in the beginning? Uh, decent. All right, well, here's my question. <laughs> You say he treats you like a side piece. What was he doing at that time that's different than what he's doing now he in terms of how he whole... treats you? Can I go into history or... Absolutely. We want to hear the story. Okay, I met him at the nursing home. Six weeks later, I found out he was married. Oh! Ooh! He didn't tell okay, you he was married? <laughs> no. I found out one of the co-workers at the job... They conveniently wanted to let him know that uh, his wife had called. And you had no idea? No. What point did it seem like, okay, I probably ought to mention to this young lady, I'm still married? I, I mean, That's she, not fair. After she, fa after she found out, you know, I, I, t no, I told I, her. Yeah, if she I, hadn't I, found I out. I was trying to get her first, and then I was going to tell her. No, no, okay. no. That's not how this works. Because, that's, see, that's... doing it that way, you put in her mind distrust right off the beginning. So you messed up your relationship with that, that notion. Because you know what? If you're married, you ain't supposed to have a, a friend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, so ultimately, I mean, we can talk about this all day. Ultimately, you all, he divorces and you all get married. Yeah. And yeah. how was that at the beginning? You're married at the beginning. Good. It was good? At first. So why are you convinced that he's cheating now? Go ahead. I didn't call him on um, dating websites since we've been married. What? And he say that he do this when he get mad at me. I didn't talk to a couple of the women. He betrayed himself to be a single man. How did you find out he was I went on his phone when he was asleep and they got notifications. Oh. Mr. Butler? Yes. Are you on dating sites? I was. Since you've been married? Yeah, I've done it. Did you list yourself as a married man or a single man? I, I list myself as a single man. Do it, you think you're single? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> when I get put out. Why are you getting put out? Three times a Why week. Why are you getting put out? I do, Why? I go do what I want to do. Because if, if you put me out your house three times a week, what you going to do? Why is your wife putting you out of the house Your three Honor, times a week? Because he get caught cheating well, and on can... dating websites well, and he don't answer the phone. Well, I, can... I talked to these ladies. He, he met one that lived right down the street from us. He took money from her. This woman told me when I called her that she was his business. She didn't even know he was married. She said, I'm his business partner selling cars. I said, excuse me? He's a man. Who are you? Did you know he had a business partner? No, I'm the only business partner. <laughs> and she, she, she was misinformed by him. She was a lady that I met. Uh huh. We know that much. Yeah. And then, and then what happened? Well, I, I met, I met, I met this lady off, off, uh, off the dating website. Uh huh. The dating website. And then when, when, when I met her. Your Honor, she brought him, she brought him jeans, brand new yeah. jeans. So, I seen her in a... She bought you clothes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what did you do to get her to buy you clothes? Why? She just liked it, me. She, uh-huh. No. Yeah. I liked it here, but I didn't buy him clothes till he was mine. But my, my, my... <laughs> that's, un that's understandable. Did you ever sleep with this woman? No, I didn't want to. She, if she looked like something, I would have. <laughs> We, we're done with that. <laughs> Tell me about this other okay, lady. Okay, this other woman he so-called met at this car wash. She used to be weighing like 500 pounds, that's what he told me. And then she lost weight or whatever. He met her at the car wash and um, she offered to... She had a car she wanted to give to him. He sell cars, I guess she didn't know about me. She said, well, I got this car, you can just have it, you can sell it. The seat broke, because I used to weigh 500 pounds. I broke the seat back in the car. He told me this. So we got Blue Jean Lady, 
the and we got a car wash lady. The fa- yeah, the car wash 500 pound lady. Well, what makes you think that he was cheating with her? Because I, I didn't know nothing about her. I didn't meet but, him. I didn't meet her with him. I know, but what makes you think he was cheating he was with her? Because it happened behind my back. I'm not for sure. I want to find okay. out. I don't all know. All right. Uh, I want to know what you're so, laughing so about. So all you know is that he was talking to her. Telling, yeah. That's he telling the story. Mr. Butler, did you sleep with a woman from the car wash? No. I haven't had sex with anyone but my wife. Did you have any kind of relationship with this woman from the car wash? No, I haven't. Did you text her? Quite a few times. Wow. Yeah. Miss Hyler, are there any other women yes. that you know yes. about or any other... Just recently, he went to Nap in the beginning of May. He met a woman at a liquor store. She was on his Facebook page. And the only reason why he removed her off his Facebook page is because she started asking questions about me, his wife, somebody that he just met. Well, I mean... Do you care? Do you have a response? About what? Ms. Oh, okay. Ms. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Miss Hyler, if we find out that Mr. Butler has, in fact, not had sexual intercourse with these women, are you willing to stay? We gotta get counseling. Some marriage counseling. Oh, That's my it. God. I do some marriage counseling. So, what you're saying is there's a lot on the line here. Yes. And you want answers. Yes. To get to the bottom of this, we've had Mr. Butler take a polygraph examination. Yes. And most importantly, we have the results. Ron, would you escort licensed private investigator Eric Eccles into the courtroom, please? Yes, Your Honor. Good morning, How you sir. Doing, Your Honor? How are you, Mr. Eccles? I'm doing fine, Your Honor. How about yourself? We're doing good. 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 You have worked on a lot of cases similar to today's couples, haven't you? Oh, yes, I have. What techniques do you use to investigate these types of cases? Well, as you can tell, when you're dealing with a character (laughs) such as... Oh, my God, exactly. (laughs) Character. There, there are different techniques. Um, there's surveillance. Okay. Uh, you can do covert surveillance and mobile surveillance. So tell us what you did to investigate Mr. Butler. Well, Mr. Butler, you can see he's smiling at me. Um, I went undercover um, in this particular case, and we did polygraph. And when I say undercover, I posed as if I was oh, the cheating spouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I didn't even know that was you. <laughs> so I did that, and then we did polygraph. Ah. Uh, all right. So when you went undercover, uh, what did you find? One of the things that, that I look at when I do something like that, I, I look at the responses that a person gives me. Okay. And the responses that he gave me, some of them turned out to be that he was not being 100% honest. Mm-hmm. You also had him take a polygraph test, is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. One of the questions Mr. Butler was asked was, since being married to Lisa, that's Ms. Hyler, did you have sexual intercourse with the lady you met at the car wash? What was his response to that question? Your Honor, his response was no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that Mr. Butler was being truthful. All right. How are you feeling? How do you feel? That's good, you know. That's but you, you, want, you want more? Yes. Mr. Butler was asked, since being married to Ms. Hyler, have you had a sexual intercourse with the woman who bought you clothes? No. What was his response to that question? Mr. Butler's response, Your Honors, was no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that Mr. Butler was being deceptive. Mr. Butler? Oh, my God. I ain't had sex with the woman. Did you have anything with the woman? Nothing. Did you kiss her? Did I kiss her? Did I stutter? No, she kissed me. Oh, she kissed you? She kissed you. All right, Did you kiss her back? Uh Uh-uh. It wasn't that type of kiss. It's like a kiss on a job. Uh, uh, uh. How many thank, times? So she didn't buy them jeans for anything. Okay. I ain't, That's t- I ain't touched Ms. them. Miss Hyler, the, the polygraph indicated the deception was indicated. Okay. Now, what do you want to do? How long ago was that? A year ago? 
I, I got, I already got my paperwork to file for divorce. <laughs> Why are you clapping? Your wife just said she got paperwork to file for divorce, and you're clapping. I, I, I just don't know, man. I, I, we'll work it out. Well, you know, Miss Hyler. I'm never gonna be able to trust. I'm never gonna. I can't do it no more. I'm 45 years old. I just want to like move on with my life. I can. I don't need that. You all have been married for 10 years. And I noticed from the court papers, you all are from Alaska, is that correct? Yes, Your That's Honor. That's correct, Your Honor. We know it gets pretty cold in Alaska. Whether this relationship gets colder than that depends on what happens here today. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Monagol, you've opened up this lawsuit. Tell us why. After being with someone for 10 years, you get to know behaviors and, and patterns, and lately his behaviors have been very shady and very suspicious, and... Um, <laughs> It's been a lot of heartache in our marriage for the last year, a lot of arguing. I feel like I'm in the same room with him and he's a million miles away, that the connection has been lost, the bond has been broken, and, and I miss him. I miss the affection we used to have and the romance, and I, I don't know where he's gone. It so. must be really distressing to be in the room with someone and there's... It's, you might, might as well be in the room with this. Right. Okay. Mr. Gu. What are you here to prove today? Well, Your Honor, um, I'm here to show her that, you know, I'm not cheating on her, that, um, you know, I've been loyal and I want her to um, start trust me. You know, there was trust and the trust has been eroded and, um, you know, I want to bring that back into the relationship so things uh, work out between us a lot better. So, Ms. Monago, there was cheating in the past and so you have concerns that he's back to his old tricks again. What are those warning signs? Like, he will go run errands or go to the store and be gone his time's not accounted for. He'll be gone for three hours and go to the store and come back with one thing. And it's usually something that he wouldn't even buy for himself. So I think he's buying it for somebody else or his no. phone will be off while he's gone and I can't get a hold of him. And he just always has an excuse for, for these things. Well, you know, sometimes lines are long at the supermarket. You know, a lot of people there. <laughs> you sometimes, but every time... Okay. Yeah. Once or twice you might be able to buy, but every time he's gone, just for a little shopping errand, it takes three hours. Right. And women are attuned to these things. Like, you know, the first time it happens, you're like, hey, that took a while. And you might look at what he bought and say, when did he start using that? And then the next time it happens, you're like, okay, wait a minute. And then the third time it happens, you're like, okay, we got a problem here. Right. So you got a running clock going in your head every time I leave the house to go to the store? <laughs> You say no. women are attuned to it, so it's like, and go. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just saying that it, you, you, you don't know that until you realize, hey, it's something to miss here. It's just a but, feeling. But it's a feeling. It's, I mean, we notice everything. We notice when you wear different cologne, or you're putting on cologne more often, or if you start wearing your fancy underwear, or if you, all those things. Women notice My all that. My fancy underwear. Well, I'm not saying you R have Ron's fancy... <laughs> Ron, do you have fancy underwear? Not really, no. Okay, all Okay, right. well, like, if you go from boxers to, right. to tidy whities or vi vice versa, or all those things we take in, if you start showering more often, even though it appears to be a good thing, but it's like, you only take a shower once a day, now you're taking two a day. Those are all the things that kind of get on our radar and say, now, what is that? And so, Ms. Monagola, are these the kinds of things you're seeing just, like, after you've been together for so long, you start to see these these drastic changes? Right, right. And so all of them add up to one thing. Like, one morning we went for an appointment and after the appointment he dropped me off at work. Okay. And when I come home from work that day, we go to take off our jackets to hang them up. He has no shirt on underneath his jacket. <gasps> and he took his shirt off with some other woman. That's what I believe. Okay. Now, Mr. Goo, I would love to be able to advance the, the argument that you just got hot and you took your shirt off. But you live in Alaska. <laughs> so that, I don't think that's gonna fly very well. Why did you have your shirt off at a point in time where she thinks, oh yeah, you definitely should have had a shirt on. She saw you before with the shirt on. 
Right. Well, Your Honor, I grabbed whatever threw it on, and my jacket was right there, so I just threw it over, not thinking, and went about the day. I know, you know, it sounds ridiculous, but, you know, when I came back home and uh, unzipped it, you know, it was like, okay, oh, I forgot, you know, I wasn't wearing a shirt. You get used to it. You don't notice the layers so much. But nevertheless, you can understand why your wife is like, really? Because I'm sitting here going, really? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay, well... I guess you could leave your shirt off, but I'm not sure. As long as you don't go anywhere where you've got the no shirt, no service on, you're okay. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but you don't believe him. You think it's... I think all these things add up to, to another woman. Have you found anything that makes you think that he's cheating? Yes. When I've, I've done laundry around the house, I found clothes that aren't mine. Oh. On... Like, what kind of clothes? Um, one occasion, I found underwear that were too big to be mine. Recently, I found another pair of underwear that were too small for me. Uh, I found them at the end of the bed and... Oh! Also found a pair of socks at the end of the bed. And the pair of socks I found, I saw on a woman that had been over to our house previously. Was this woman a friend or who was this woman? More of an acquaintance, a friend of a friend. So, you... These socks you saw on another woman who had been to your house, an acquaintance, and you trying to figure out, why is this woman's socks at the end of my bed? Absolutely. It leads me to believe that the underwear were hers, too. Mr. Gould, you seem to have a problem with clothes. You don't have clothes you're supposed to. <laughs> clothes that are not supposed to be there are showing up. I mean, I was okay with the no shirt thing, but now this is another level. Women's yeah. panties that don't belong to your wife in your house at the end of your bed, how in the world can you explain that? One of the ex explanations I came up with was that, um, you know, maybe she, uh, when she was, she likes to use uh, multiple dryers for one load of clothes when she washes them. And so I thought, you know, sometimes maybe somebody forgot their underwear in. I know it sounds crazy, it sounds ridiculous, but I honestly don't have a real good explanation for it. Um, other, and then another thing could be, I also uh, told her, you know, my ex lives down the road. You know, this is something that could have been, you know, she's been trying to get even with me, so maybe she planted them. I don't know. Um, you know, we do leave our door unlocked and whatnot. I know it sounds ridiculous, but... But I, you know. I picked up on... You said one of the excuses I gave, like... No, one of the excuses I came up with. Came up that with. That was his phrase. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> That doesn't sound... Well, one of the reasons. I meant one of the reasons why it was there at the time, yeah. I mean, excuses, but... I just... Honestly, I don't have a real good reason for it being there. I don't know why it got Okay, there. but please don't suggest to me that now we have a pair of underwear, a pair of socks that have been planted by somebody else. Now, at not, two different times. Not just by somebody else. But his ex. An ex. Okay. <laughs> so, you're not telling us that, are you? I don't know, Your Honor. You know, I have no good reason for why it's there. I just... It wasn't me, so... I mean, that's all I can say, really. Honestly, I didn't have anything to do with it. That's what you got. That's what I got. <laughs> OK, I gotta ask this question, Cutler. The socks. You said you saw these same socks on an acquaintance. Yes. If it were me, I'd have to do a little bit more of an investigation of that woman. Have you, perchance, done that? Well, I, I didn't really need to. I, uh... Last week when I came home from work, I, I don't take my phone to work with me. I leave okay. it at home. Okay. When I came home from work that day and opened up my phone, I can see that this woman's socks, I thought they were, had logged into her Facebook account on my phone. What? And I don't understand how that happened unless she was there that day. So you're wondering why is some why woman... Why sock lady? Why is this... Right. Yeah, this particular woman in your house. Right, and he, he knows I'm uncomfortable with her being there. At all. I'm, I'm comfortable with her, period. Okay, so why was Sock Lady at the house? Your Honor, um, you know what? I have no good explanation for that either. Um, okay, wait. What? Was she at the house? Uh, as far as I know, no. But, you know, I mean, I have no idea what... It just came in and she brought that up and I don't know, Your Honor. I have no idea. We leave our doors unlocked, our windows open. It's hot in the summer. It could be a possibility that maybe she came into the house and, and um, I don't know. You know. Okay, you know what? This is not Goldilocks just trying to find some porridge and a comfortable bed or, or a nice chair to sit in. Well, this is... <laughs> you know, just walk in folks' houses and say, well, let me see. Oh, her phone. Let me go in there and let me use her phone. 
know. Well, it kind of is like Goldilocks because you had one pair of panties that were too big, you had another <laughs> pair of panties that were too small, and then you had the socks that fit just That's right. That's right. Okay. <laughs> I mean... I'm not... It, I don't and even have words for this. I don't have words for it either, only because for each scenario, he's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you got me. <laughs> and, you know, at some point, you know, it points to one thing. Either you're not being fully forthcoming or you are by far the world's unluckiest person. <laughs> <laughs> well, they just don't make sense to me. It, well, me and you, we're here. Right. It doesn't make sense. And not only does it not make sense, it's, it's very hurtful to you, isn't it? Oh, my heart aches every day. I, I still very much love him. I very much still have a crush on him. Tell I, him how I, it makes you feel. It, it hurts me every day. I, every day we're going through it where we should be having good memories made. We're, we're making bad ones. Well, Mr. Cutler, this is a 10-year marriage on the line. They have been together 11 years. She feels distant and apart from him. And it's because of this evidence. She found... She has found mystery panties, one too small, one too big, twice in their home. Once in the foot of their bed. One of them in the foot of the bed. She's found socks that belong to an acquaintance. And that... And, and those socks were also found in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And when she came home from work one day, picks up her phone, she's left her phone at, at, at home for five hours, picks it up, and this woman, the sock lady, I've dubbed her, has used her phone to log into Facebook. And what we have is n basically no response or nuh uh from Mr. Gould. Yeah. And she says, if this continues, if this is true, she's done. Am I right, Ms. Monaco? Yes. You just can't continue I... to have this heartache. Right. Right. Every day it seems I'm crying over something or we're arguing over something. It's just... Uh, been very dramatic the last year, and you're just like I can't. I need put him up to come this. back to me, or or tell me he's in love with somebody else. But what you're not gonna do is stay in limbo. Absolutely not. I can't do that. So, so Mr. the stakes Gould, are high. Are, are you in love with somebody else? No, Your Honor. Is there somebody else? No, Your Honor. There isn't. You know, I know she doesn't believe me, but it is what it is, and, and you know that's that's how it is, and you know I'm not guilty of that, so. And you're here to prove that today. I'm here to prove that today. Once and for all. Once and for all. Absolutely. All right. This court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call former military interrogator Lena Sisko to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> Ms. Sisko, would you please state for the court record your credentials? Yes, Your Honor. I am a former military interrogator certified by the Department of Defense, and shortly after 9-11, I was deployed to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, where I interrogated members of Al-Qaeda and Taliban. And since that time, I have been training law enforcement personnel, military personnel, and government agency personnel in interviewing and interrogation techniques. Some people have even gone to jail based on your analysis and your interrogation, correct? That is correct. So, can you tell us what you did to investigate this particular case? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I first had the accused write a witness statement. So, I go through that and I look for any indicators of truthfulness and deception. I studied their case files. I put together an interrogation plan. And then, with those two pieces of evidence, I call them, I create an interrogation plan and interrogate the accused to see if they are cheating. So, you conducted a full investigation. What were the results of your investigation? At first, Mr. Gould's body language was very difficult to read because he was closed off during the entire interview. However, he still engaged in conversation with me. He admitted that he had cheated in the past, but he told me that for the past two years that he's been faithful and he hasn't cheated. Now, Ms. Monago has found mysterious panties around the house, mysterious socks, and she believes that may belong to a mutual friend of theirs. In your investigation, what did you find out about this mutual friend? Mr. Gould admitted to me that he wanted to engage in a threesome with this woman. So he said that she was very young and attractive. But then he told me that he did not play with her or have sex with her. Hmm. Is there anything else you learned while you were interrogating Mr. Gould? Mr. Gould did tell me... He also feels 
that, and again, I'm gonna quote him, for the last two years of being faithful, I feel like it's been for nothing because I'm still being accused of be cheating. Hmm. So at the end of your interrogation, what was your conclusion about whether Mr. Gould is cheating or not? So my overall conclusion is that Mr. Gould has not cheated and has been faithful for the past two years. Ms. Monaco, upon hearing those results, what's going through your mind right now? I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm, I'm very happy. <laughs> I, you can go over there and I let mean... him know. <laughs> Ms. Snell, you brought your boyfriend here because of broken promises, and you're asking this court for $2,400. Yes. Tell me about those broken promises. Yes, Your Honor. Bird took advantage of me. He has cheated on me throughout the whole relationship. Ooh. And yes, I have brought him here today to get my money back. I did not take advantage of her. Uh, Cena has been uh, controlling the, the... trying to control the uh, relationship with uh, giving me gifts and giving me things and whatnot. I don't want anything. How many years together? Two. Two years together? Yes, sir. And she's controlling it through gifts? Through gifts. I want you to control me through gifts. <laughs> I got a list. You got a list? I got a yeah. list. We'll talk after, but I want okay. that kind of control. So, All right, tell me about this. How you control a man through gifts? Well, I have taken Bird on helicopter rides. I have bought him jewelry, take them out to dinner, food, everything. Anything that Bird has asked me for or needed, I have been there for Bird. How did y'all meet? I was working um, as a part-time job at a security firm. When I met him, we talked. He made me feel like I was in high school, like I had a smile from ear to ear. I remember one night we was working, I told him, I said, Bird, I want to do you dirty. He said, <laughs> he said, what? Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what made a girl jump off like that? The way he spoke to me, like his whole country accent, it just drove <laughs> me crazy. <laughs> so, so he's got a smooth, kind of cool thing working over yeah, there. Yeah, that's, yeah, what yeah. It, that's what it was. So at that point, he told me to uh, elaborate. So I was like, Bird, I just want to do you nasty in so many different ways. <laughs> and from that point, one thing <laughs> led to another. <laughs> and uh, this started off with Tracina bringing me snacks like chips, pops, juices, water. It's true. The way to yeah. a man's heart. Yeah. Through his thumb. Okay. That's right. Snacks, drink, water. <laughs> Do me dirty. That's, yeah. That's, that's how that's the path. Woo! Okay. Exactly. So at that point, I mean, we, we was in the front seat, in the back seat, we did whatever. It was to the point that we were racing down the expressway to meet at my house. Like... Okay, wait a minute. Were y'all supposed to be guarding something? Yeah, we supposed to be guarding the building. We were. Okay, so the building, we <laughs> were. Y'all kicked the building to the curb. No, we was, we was watching. No, we... Okay, so what happens? Pretty much we was just friends with benefits after that. So, did it ever move, in your perspective, beyond friends with benefits? No, because I told Cena that I wanted nothing with a relationship right now. Okay. So, in your mind, did it move past friends with benefits? Yes. Okay. Once we continued to do what we was doing, he kept on coming back, and that's when he told me, Cena, I don't have no problem to be with you. I said, so, you telling me when he bought me a bracelet, that I'm your woman. He said, this is what you want? I said, yeah, this is what I want when he bought me a bracelet. I bought you the bracelet because that's what friends do anyway. No, baby, Friend, no. Friends, friends no, will baby. sit back and look out no. for each other regardless. No, baby. And the charms on there say, I love you. The charms well, that was on there was one was a heart and the other one said love. No, not... it said, I love okay. you. Okay, okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm no Einstein, but if a man preferably this one, <laughs> gives me a bracelet that has a, a, a heart on it and a love on it, I'm gonna think he's not just talking to the people in the air. He's talking to me. Mr. Bird, I mean, it's looking so far like you're in a relationship. <laughs> really? Like I said, it was just out of the kindness of my it, heart. That's it was not. It. So, were you ever in a relationship? No. Oh, okay. In your mind, you're in a relationship because you got a bracelet that says heart and love. I had a bracelet. Where did only... this go wrong? 
it went wrong when he had moved to his family house and he was sitting there on the floor. And I said, baby, ain't no man I mess with have to sleep on the floor. I will get you a bed. I had a mattress to my car for this man. So we wasn't no friends. Yeah, I don't think you Two hours mattresses. it took me to get to his house. And you I had to hold the mattress like this to get it on the so... expressway to his house. For two hours? For two hours. <laughs> I'm holding it, driving so... like this. So... About to kill people and so... everything. So... I wasn't none of his friends. Okay, Mr. Bird, come on now. Bracelets with yep. hearts on them. Hmm. She's driving two hours of the mattress strapped mattress. to the top of her car for That's you. A beautiful thing did... with that story she just gave. So, I, I didn't. I did. Uh, did. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, okay. It is a beautiful thing. <laughs> you know, because not a lot of women would do that. It's the truth. It it do you is. know the I kind will. of woman that would do that? One that's in a relationship. Exactly. All right. You have brought Mr. Bird here because you felt he was scamming you. Yes. And you are asking this court for $2,400. Yes. Please explain your lawsuit. Okay. So, Bird came to me because he had a buy previously. Okay. He lost his job. Once he lost his job, he could no longer make payments on the bike. He said, well, you know, if I found a bike, you know, you can go ahead and pay for it, and then when I get my taxes on February 28th, you're going to have your money. I said, okay, fine. He found the bike. We both went to the bank and got cash, and he had cash in his hand. Do you have any proof that it was a loan other than him, him saying, I'm going to pay you back? Um, the promissory note, but he didn't sign it. He refused to sign it. Do you have the promissory yes. note? Yes. Would you get that wrong, please? Yes, Sean. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you had you drafted up a promissory note for him to sign. Yes. Because it was a twenty four hundred dollar loan. Yes. How did he talk you out of not signing this? He said his word was his bond. This is exactly what we tell people all the time: get get a promissory note, mm -hmm. but we also say get it signed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But your intent, very clearly, is to have a loan. This was not a gift. No, it was not. And he knew that. And he said when he got his taxes, he was gonna give me my money back. Three days before it was time for him to return my money, he gonna tell me that the, the IRS had took his taxes. I'm like, really, Bird? Really? Did she tell you that this was a loan? No. <laughs> what did she tell you? She told me that she was gonna help me get a bite, which she did. I told her myself that I would give her her money back. However, as time went on, the IRS had held my check for a moment, and then they, they uh, told me that I couldn't get it. She said she would help you get a bike. You said, thank you, I will pay you back. Hmm. Right. Okay, at that point, it looks like a loan. Hmm. It is a loan. Because you don't exactly. pay back gifts, that's a loan. Now... You're right. Right, yes. okay. You're absolutely right. Regardless of what happened down the line, I mean, at that point, you've agreed to pay yes. it back. Yes, okay. at that point. But once the, the IRS situation happened, I, would, I just had to come forward and let her know I couldn't give it back to her right then and there. And of have you course. paid anything back? No. I haven't paid anything back because she withdrew from that. She sat back and told me, Bird, don't worry about it. Take it as a gift. I didn't wash my hands of it. <laughs> so, Miss Snell, did you forgive this loan? No. Did this conversation happen? No. Anything close to this conversation? No. Happened? What did you tell him about his I inability to... I want my to... money. Right. When he told you that he wasn't going to be able to pay you, what did you tell him? He said, Santa, so, you know, I got my car note and things of that sort, so I just don't want to be broke. I said, Bert, you got to give me something. You have to give me something. Bert didn't try to give me anything. Snell, you know that, dog. All right. Conversation but, Miss Snell, let me like ask that. this. All right, Bert. If you're in a relationship, why are you loaning money to someone you're in a relationship with? Don't you just give it as a gift? I took this man to Las Vegas. That was his gift. His clothes was his gift. Here's the thing. She, she was very clear about what was a gift. A woman doesn't draw up a promissory note for a gift. I want to know what you said when she handed this to you. Mm. That's my first time seeing that. You no, have never seen this before. No. All right, Bert. So you didn't tell her, my word is my bond. I did. Huh. Okay, why did but you why, tell her why that? Why did you tell her that? Because at the time, yes, I was supposed to be giving her her money back. So but when did your bond I... kick in? Because you ain't paid her back? I didn't have to after she told me I didn't have to pay it back. All right, Bert. Let me ask you something. Yes. If you find out he hasn't cheated, do you still want your money back? Yes. All right. <laughs> do you want him back? I love Bird. I love Bird with all my heart. So that's a yes? Yeah. I love Bird. You want the dirty Bird. I want the dirty <laughs> Bird. All right. All right. 
when Bird was caught on his bike with another woman on there. You seen a woman on a bike? On your bike. It was the bike I bought. I know what I bought. And I sat there and I seen him and he hit the woman on the bike. So when I tried to follow him, he pulled off. I Mr. Did. Bird? First of all, wasn't no woman on my bike. All right. There was no woman on my bike. You've when... never given a woman a ride on your bike? Not while I was talking to her, no. Mm. Okay. Well, you said while you were talking to her, so that's the relationship, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I exactly. Said, but did no, I no, not no. bring up the point? Exactly. All right. What other reasons do you have to believe that he was cheating? Burr had became distanced. Burr used to be at my house all the time. He had stopped calling me. You know, I had to almost pop up to his house, and then I had went to do this drug testing for this third job I had to pick up. So an infomercial came about, basically telling <clears throat> you had to put this app on your phone. So I put the app on my phone. And you okay, what is this app and what did it do? The app was a phone that was connected to my iPhone. So it gave me my own personal number. So at that point, I'm texting him. So he responded back to the text. I was pretending like I was some lady named Lady K. So he's steady going back and forth because okay, of so me. Let me make sure so I got this. You have an app on your phone that gives you a different phone number. Yes. And so you're using that phone number Yes, to... contact him. And, and he... you, you basically catfishing him. Yes. This man been texting this woman back and forth, which was always me. I said, so are you in a relationship? He said, no, I'm only committed to my son. I said, oh, okay. I go to the liquor store. I met this pretty girl. I asked her, I need your voice because I have to sit here and, um, trying to figure out what's going on. My gosh, she said, I'm down for whatever. So you go and see it. Now, this is what the girl say. Right. So she get on the phone. Uh, you know, women stick together like that. Yeah, so she, she went straight so to she gets, Yeah, so she get on the Lisa, phone. She's talking right. to him. And she was like, yeah, I'm in the charger and, you know, so on, so forth and all this. He said, okay, I'll meet you in 15 minutes. So I go across the street. I'm in the bushes like this. <laughs> you know, waiting for him. So when he came, he pulled up. I got in my car. He drove. And I, I hit him. I hit okay, wait a minute. What? You are hiding in the bushes. Yes. Because you've gone straight CSI. Yes. And you've set up a sting operation. Yes. And he takes the fall and yes. comes. Yes. Come on. Mr. Tell Bird, me about what you got? Mr. Bird. Yeah, that, that one dead in the bag. First of all, the way she texts, she used the same way that she texts me regularly. So you recognize the I words recognized the you... way that she was texting, so I knew who it was. So basically, I started playing into her game. And I called three to four times at least. Uh huh. And I Each kept time, she'll, she'll ignore the call by saying that she's driving or she's busy, she's doing this. All the time. I want you to pick up for a reason because I know it's you. Stop playing. So when I got there, yes, as I, pull, as I pulled up to the designated spot, whatever, I wasn't looking for a charger. Hmm. Hmm. I was looking for her. Did you find her? Yeah, clearly. Yeah. She runs straight into me. <laughs> Told his bike. I'm on a, I'm on a my bike up. It's just the fact that she didn't see no harm in what she did was wrong. You're tearing up. That hurts you. Yeah, I got a son. She could have took my life. When he told me that night, you tore my bike. It wasn't about his life. It wasn't about none of that. His bike. He kept on speaking on his bike. It was my bike. But Miss Snell, was he on the bike when you went ran into? No, him? he had got off and I hit it. Right, uh, Miss Snell, you still have unanswered questions about whether he was cheating. So to get to the bottom of this, the court is going to call former special agent of the FBI and licensed polygraph examiner, Mr. Kendall Scholl of Kendall Investigations. Ron, would you please escort Mr. Scholl into the courtroom? Yes, Sean. <laughs> Mr. Scholl, how are you today? Good, thank you, Your Honor. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Now, Mr. Bird has testified in court that he has not been with any other women. And you administered a polygraph examination for Mr. Bird. Is that yes, correct? Yes, I did, Your Honor. All right. <sighs> Mr. Schell, you asked, during your two-year relationship with Miss Snail, did you have sexual intercourse with any other woman? What was his response? Your Honor, he said no. What did the lie detector reveal? Your Honor, the lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. Hmm. 
Miss Snell? Yes. How are you feeling? I'm hurt. Tell him how you're feeling. But you know, I loved you from the bottom of my heart, from take one. It was nothing that you ever asked me for I wouldn't do for you. And you wrong. You wrong. I'm so disappointed in you. Mr. Shell, you also asked him a question that will help us with the lawsuit. You asked, did you promise to pay Miss Snell the $2,400 loan she gave you? Is that correct? That's correct, Your And Honor. what was his answer? He said, yes. So he admitted that he was going to pay her back the loan? Yes, he did, Your Honor. All right, well, with respect to the promissory note, all the evidence before the court, it appears that it was a loan. All of the indications are that you intended to pay that loan back. And so, uh, based on that evidence, we are going to find in favor of Ms. Snell and order you to repay her the $2,400 for the cost of the bike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Byrd, I mean, do you want to be in this relationship? Not no more. Hmm. It's better for me to let go. Well, and if you want to let go, that's fine. But if you're in another relationship with anybody, you have got to be honest in your relationship. Exactly. This thing about, well, she thinks it's a relationship, but I think it's a friendship. There has to be a meeting of the minds. If you're ever going to have any kind of happy relationship, you both got to be on the same plane. 